As most of us know, the broader Rolex community loves this watch. It is considered by many to be the perfect watch. On that point I can agree and see the reasoning. Speaking candidly, the Rolex Explorer is the perfect amalgamation of a sports watch and a dress watch. It is because it meets these requirements so well that it falls into such an excellent category, and why many consider it to be perfect. At the same time, however, objectively speaking, a designer would never admit that a product is perfect. It's almost an oath we take, because we know what goes into creating something, and the hours of concepts, edits, prototypes, and remakes. The question is, after all this time of remaining the same, almost untouched, does the design of the Rolex Explorer warrant more approval? So instead of comparing the layout of the watch and looking at it face value, there is an element to the watch that is less spoken about, that gives it a serious edge. To do that, we'll briefly touch on its history, but focus on its design development. The history in a nutshell can be summed up as this. Rolex were developing an Oyster Perpetual prototype, and they gave a handful of watches to Edmund Hillary and his team to use during their expedition. The story goes that when Tenzing Norgay summited first, he checked the Rolex on his wrist, and Hillary summited after him, checking both the Rolex and the Smith's watch on his other wrist. After they returned home and sung the praises of the piece, Rolex created the Explorer, and for a time the watch dial remained the same, a similar Oyster Perpetual with Explorer text printed on the dial. Soon after, the world was introduced to the dial design of the 6298, a model that cemented the format of the Explorer line for years to come. This then led to the 1016, a reference that many consider to be one of the most collectible vintage Rolex pieces in the world, and it truly is something to behold. Even now, all these years later, the design hasn't lost its charm in the slightest. There is no question why this watch is a holy grail watch for so many. And the layout of this piece is extremely simplistic, playing well into its intended purpose. And now over the last five decades, we have the reference 214270 to compare it against. This leads neatly into the development of the watch. And to explain the intricacies of the Explorer's development, we need to compare it against another Rolex darling, the Submariner. A watch that originated during the time of the Explorer and has since developed into an icon of the brand arguably more of an icon of the brand because of its popularity, but what is fascinating is the road to where it situated itself today. During its time of development up until now, the Submariner has over 30 references to its name. Refer to the excellent Hodinkee video running through all the Submariner references in the corner of the screen now. Whether that is because the watch has a different movement, case size, crown size, bezel diameter, the configuration of these pieces are endless. And measuring the Explorer against the Submariner, it only technically has around six notable references to its name over the same period of over half a century. The question then is why? The Submariner as we know became a more sought after professional tool and had to gradually evolve, adapting to greater demands. Could this mean that Rolex focused their attention more on this watch and left the Explorer on the wayside? Or, a more interesting theory of mine, did Rolex consider the design of the Explorer good enough to leave alone? Did they believe that the watch never needed to be updated? And that leads to the crux. Does this mean that the Explorer is a more refined and better designed watch than the Holy Submariner, since it needed less development in its lifetime? I'm inclined to believe so. Returning to the modern watch, we can see just how well it has been executed. This is a point that has been mentioned often by the community, that the modern Explorer, the 214-270, is one of the only Rolex watches in the current lineup that truly has stayed faithful to its past. The watch has all the modern improvements, but still is very much like the watches from 50 years ago. More than that, it still has the persona of being a watch intended to be used as a tool, and not a watch trying to fall into this luxury niche that many Rolex pieces are forcing themselves into. It is fully brushed, unadorned, simple, sturdy, and robust. All of the modern improvements have made it all the more competent to be used as a field watch or just as a great all-around instrument. And for our modern world, and what we ultimately require from a watch, the Explorer achieves more than most because of its versatility. The simplicity of the dial allows for it to work on bracelets, leather straps, and nylon straps. And because of that, it is capable of being transformed if the wearer is bored of the standard configuration, making it great for any occasion. So even if you are someone who does not collect watches, this piece makes for an excellent companion. But then at the same time, if you enjoy a watch that has a genuine history and a development to match, the Explorer has so much to offer, and something greater than what the rest of the Rolex family has to offer, in my opinion.
Also, I must suggest that you have a look at Bark and Jack's latest video discussing the 36 and 39mm explorers that he released a few days before mine. His discussion goes into more detail about the watch's references and movements. I'll link the video in the corner of the screen now. Moving to the design of the watch, it appears very plain, but the simplicity is deceptive. The watch dial is mesmerizing. What fascinates me most about the Explorer configuration is that it has managed to make the watch appear both simple and complicated. There are layers to how the dial has been approached. The combination of numerals and batons is one example. This unbalance on the dial divides up the space and the conflict makes it easier to read at a glance. Then we look at the minute track and see how the five minute marks are bold. This emphasizes the batons and adds more presence to the dial. And this is important because the 39mm size is a strange size for this piece. To those few who have always felt that it looks peculiar, there is a reason for it. The case and its proportions relative to the bezel width is one aspect, but the dial is what dictates a lot of what you are seeing. Space is so important with a watch, and utilizing its space is doubly important. If the space is not used, it is essentially wasted. A lot of the time what you are seeing on a simple watch is negative space. That is the open space found between the batons and the hands. The greater the dial size, the greater the negative space, and there is a conflict to this. Sadly, this is the one aspect that detracts from the 214270's design. Open space and empty space on the dial makes it look less integrated. The components look less in touch with one another, and that is why many find the 36mm piece all the more appealing. Just having the elements closer together makes the watch look more dense, and in that way, more integrated. Why is this watch so iconic? Primarily because the watch barely changed at all. Rolex is a master at keeping products the same and incrementally improving them, and as we have seen time and time again, that is how an icon is created. If I had a say on the matter to improve the Explorer further, I would drop the overall size down by about a millimeter to a mark somewhere around 37 and a half millimeters, simply to add more of a closer relationship between the batons and the numerals on the dial. Also, I believe the smaller size is more universal and would fit more wrists. The Explorer is one of the most underrated watches in the Rolex family. It is often overlooked because it is so basic and uninteresting to many, but being a watch that has one of the greatest stories affiliated to its name, and more than that, it is a watch that is not trying to show off. It does not look like something luxurious, and even to this day remains as much of a tool watch as it always has been. The simplicity and complexity of the watch's dial stems from decades of use, and because of its lack of development for the sake of it, the watch remains true to form and a true icon. Because of that, its unrivaled history, its development that has kept it the same in the modern range, I can say with certainty that this is one of the most perfect Rolexes ever made. A watch that is not compromised under the pressures of modern standards, and I believe a watch that never will.